Good day, everyone. Welcome to Post Row Show. I'm Nicholas Check. I'm Becca Compton. And today we'll be interviewing Wendy Ill. All right, cool. Already. So we're here in the radio station with Wendy M. Mm-hmm. She teaches um, about natural family planning. Um, if you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit mm-hmm. about what you do. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. This yeah, is no so, uh, this is a great opportunity, so I appreciate it. <laughs> um, yes, I'm Wendy M. Um, I, my title is a fertility care practitioner. Okay. And um, I educate women, um, single women and married couples um, on the Creighton Model Fertility Care System. And that is a form of educating on the phases of fertility and infertility that a woman that occurs in a woman's body and uh, so that it can be used for the couple to achieve or avoid pregnancy but also it's a form of monitoring and maintaining the reproductive and gynecological health at the same time so lots of different things that we're looking at we call it napro tracking okay Mm -hmm. very cool yeah let me start off with like the most basic question. Are you pro-life? I am pro-life, <laughs> Becca. Absolutely. Uh. <laughs> Happily proud to be. <laughs> and do you at all, um, do you spread like the pro-life message at all in your work? Just out of curiosity. I would say it's not in um, uh, like a flat out, very strong, we're mm-hmm. pro-life, mm-hmm. but we give the understanding of the respect for life by understanding our bodies. Mm-hmm. And we actually do, in the appointments that I have with women and couples, we ask the question, how open to life are you? Should you achieve a pregnancy? So mm-hmm. this can be mm-hmm. a married couple, this could be a young woman coming to me to learn more about her body. And we ask from the very beginning, how open to life are you? Because we want to know kind of those red flags of Mm -hmm. should they find themselves in that position, even as married couples, you know, Mm -hmm. um, having a a pregnancy that maybe they didn't plan, where are they going to be at that moment? And how can I help them through that process of understanding the beauty of life? Mm -hmm. Also, I just I do want to point out, I like how you said um, achieve pregnancy because pregnancy really it's not something that it's like. (laughs) It's not, it's not a bad thing. Like it can be a scary thing. Yes. Um, a stressful thing. Absolutely. Um, but I, I just like the choice of achieve because mm-hmm. it really, it is a gift and something to be proud of. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Thank you for yeah. that. It, mm-hmm. it's, it, it was a small thing I caught, but I was like, Oh, I like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're mm-hmm. right. And it, it takes that reminder, a constant reminder of that fertility is one of those things that you can't guarantee and that Mm -hmm. it is absolutely a gift. And in our world where we can control almost everything, (laughs) our fertility is one of those things that we can't. And as much as we want to, and as much as we want it to fit in a plan, um, it just doesn't work that way. And so it's the whole part of appreciating that Mm -hmm. and trusting. (laughs) Yeah. So you say natural family planning. Um, could you, you for those listening who don't quite understand what that is, or you like you've used some like some broader words um, mm-hmm. for the layperson, we'll say. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? What is it exactly? What natural family planning is. That's a great question. Um, natural family planning is planning your family naturally. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to use those words, um, it's there are a lot of different changes that a woman's body goes through, and I don't mean to call out the woman, um, just because maybe she's more organized and she's a better writer and so she can write (laughs) things down better and we trust her. That's not the case at all, but a woman's body is the one in the two of man and woman that is always changing. Mm -hmm. A man is very simply always fertile. And so he very much is a part of the planning process, Um, but it's the woman's body that's always changing. Mm -hmm. And so um, natural family planning methods, there's a lot of them that are very scientifically sound that are out there um, that will um, help a woman to understand 
different observations that her body is providing during certain times of her cycle and uh, that she can identify those to determine what what phase she's in is she in a phase of fertility or mm-hmm. infertility mm-hmm. but then it's it's not just the woman's fertility but it's the couples so mm-hmm. not only when you're a married couple it becomes the couple is fertile during this time and the mm-hmm. couple is infertile during this time mm-hmm. with those changes so different methods focus on different biomarkers um, and so some Uh, monitor several biomarkers, others just focus on one. And so all methods are different, but they focus on the natural changes of a woman and then allow the couple together, not their instructor, not the world, (laughs) but the couple themselves get to decide, do we use these days to try to achieve a pregnancy or do we periodically avoid those days in order to avoid a pregnancy? Mm -hmm. Because God intended the physical intimacy to be life creating Mm -hmm. for us to be co-creators with life so we periodically abstain from those days of fertility if we are trying to space a pregnancy Mm -hmm. and so we allow the couple to understand that through the education Mm -hmm. nice yeah that's so nice um on that kind of topic of natural uh birth control so with like birth control and like the pill um what are the dangers of the pill exactly if you know them Mm. Mm mm-hmm Um, So I think it helps first to understand how the pill works Mm -hmm. to then understand the dangers behind it. And most women um, would probably tell you that they don't understand how the pill works. They were told to take that particular medication in order to fix whatever problem that they were having or Mm -hmm. to... uh, to, uh, reach a point that they wanted to either avoid a pregnancy or to fix some kind of fertility concerns. But so the birth control um, pill works in three ways. It The first way is that it will um, prevent ovulation, will mm-hmm. prevent the release of an egg from a woman's ovary. Um, it doesn't work 100% of the time. We can probably hear stories of women that were still able to achieve a pregnancy while on the pill. So we know, but we know that's one way that it works is it prevents ovulation. Mm -hmm. The second way it works is it prevents or it makes the women, the woman's environment really um, unwelcoming to sperm, to Mm -hmm. the cell that the man provides in order for conception to happen. And, uh, but again, not 100% of the Mm -hmm. time because (laughs) pregnancies still can happen. Mm -hmm. And then the third way that it works is it makes the uterine lining of the woman really thin. Um, And so this makes it particularly helpful if a woman is experiencing really painful or heavy periods because she um, can have a really thin lining and so she experiences less pain or less bleeding. Mm -hmm. But that's where the problem comes with the birth control pill in regards to um, uh, it being considered an abortifacient or Mm -hmm. ending life Mm -hmm. because uh, women can still achieve a pregnancy while on the birth control pill. Ovulation can still happen. Sperm can still make its way for mm. conception to happen. Mm. But then that third part of the uterine lining staying really thin mm-hmm. doesn't allow that baby, baby, <laughs> to then um, attach itself into the uterine lining where it's supposed to be for the next Uh, following months um, Mm -hmm. of the baby's life in utero and so the baby will then be expelled through the woman's body oftentimes without the couple even knowing that they achieved a pregnancy Mm -hmm. Um, besides the fact of that is um, the fact that it is an artificial medication so an artificial hormone Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a bioidentical hormone so it builds up in a woman's body because her body can't properly break those hormones down. Those aren't chemicals that we normally produce in our body. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't break down the same way. And so it can wreak havoc a lot on the woman's body, a lot of side effects, Mm -hmm. blood clots, um, uh, cancers, uh, more bleeding, um, a lot of things Mm -hmm. uh, that Mm -hmm. can can be very harmful for the woman. Mm 
That's so sad. Yeah, um, I, I think it's important that people hear the side effects. Because mm-hmm. I think it's very easy to just think, well, it's a quick fix, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. It's like, don't want to get pregnant, so I'll take this and I won't get pregnant. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't 100% of the time work. Right. Um, but even if you look past, like, not that you should look past the fact of what it's designed to do, um, mm-hmm. but there are still some unforeseen consequences that some people aren't aware of. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. And they're getting sneakier now with, you know, the the messaging and all those mm-hmm. side effects that a couple can experience mm-hmm. by not necessarily putting those all on the on the paper that oh. you're received with the medication. It will say, you know, talk to your pharmacist about possible or talk to your doctor about possible mm-hmm. side effects. And so they're not in your face, you know, staring yeah. at you. And oftentimes the doctors don't have time to go over all of the side effects when they have very short amount of time to be with that woman in her appointment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's yeah. so sad. Just as people were naturally kind of lazy. And it's <laughs> like, you see, it's like, oh, talk to someone about the side effects. It's like, I'm sure if they were serious, they would just put it on the on mm-hmm. the paper, right? Not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Convenience is, is huge in our world today. Absolutely. I even had a, a doctor once tell me, um, we are providing the service that the women want. So this is the service we will provide. And mm-hmm. I thought, it's so sad because I see so many women that absolutely do not want this. Yeah. And so if they knew of the amount of women that didn't want something like that and wanted a better option, mm-hmm. um, I would think that their minds would change about that. But mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Is there any moment where the pill might be necessary? I mean, I might have people angry with me, but I would <laughs> say absolutely not. Oh. Knowing what I know about um, with the Creighton model, uh, we are a standardized uh the Creighton model is very standardized. And so we get very, uh, we have a language basically Mm -hmm. of the way that we chart our biomarkers. And, And so the information becomes super objective and doctors were then able to look at thousands of women's charts and thousands of months of charting and determine a lot of, um, issues with a woman's fertility that they were able to finally diagnose and then finally treat for the very first time. And that is through um, NAPRO technology, which is short for natural procreative technology. And there are doctors out there now that can look at a woman's chart and can finally give her a diagnosis for her issues and uh, can finally treat those issues. So even things first when it comes to family planning, fertility isn't a disease. It's part of our health, and it's something to cooperate with and not mm-hmm. to suppress. Mm-hmm. Um, so from that standpoint, there are very scientifically sound methods that can help you do that naturally without the need for birth control. Um, and then um, also when it comes to a woman's health, if she's having uh, some fertility concerns of her own that need to be addressed there's Mm -hmm. something so much better out there for her Mm -hmm. than the pill yeah it's crazy to me that doctors or anything don't know about this or anything and it's just so little kind of known Mm -hmm. and i just wish it was so that's why i love having you on here because i'm like more people can know about it then absolutely i just wish it was all more known yeah well and sadly i have a nursing background Mm -hmm. i um I practiced as a nurse until I started devoting more time to this. And my husband is a physician. Mm -hmm. And so both of us in the medical field can tell you that nurses and doctors are not taught this in school. And we have very little understanding of it. So when you go to your doctor, they would have had to go and do extra training or look into it themselves that they were interested in understanding more about it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you do you do know more about your body sometimes than your doctor when you when you start understanding how to chart mm-hmm. um, and understand your fertility that way. Mm-hmm. You see, that's interesting to me. Well, you're you're saying, um, especially we live in this world where you know abortion is a very common topic. People talk about it's it's heated, and then people often they'll start talking about birth control in uh, like a company to that. So it's not like birth control is never talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's talked about all the time. Mm-hmm. But you're saying they like they really don't go over much 
details on it like in medical school and stuff like that like they don't go it very, over it very in detail or well not the woman's body oh okay. because they don't have to anymore mm -hmm. they have artificial means to avoid a pregnancy and they have artificial means to achieve a pregnancy mm -hmm. so no longer does a woman really need to understand her body or a doctor really need to understand the woman's body because there are medications and treatments that they can provide women and couples without that without that necessity that's mm -hmm. crazy that's yeah. crazy like wow mm -hmm. yeah what are some <clears throat> conditions that doctors may treat with the pill that actually can be treated naturally great question um i would say the biggest reason why a lot of women get placed on birth control is because of heavy bleeding or painful periods mm -hmm. um I guess I would also say I'm hearing more younger women get put on the pill because uh, they're not having periods, mm -hmm. which I could go into more of that, but that's a lot of information mm -hmm. too. But um, there's a lot of reasons for that. And so uh, I will give a quick example of that because people might be like, well, that is a reason to be. Mm -hmm. um, and so birth control is considered a progestin and not a progesterone and so mm -hmm. some people will miss uh uh will miscommunicate that or not communicate that correctly and say that we're putting you on a hormone in order for you to restart your periods i was told that i had very irregular cycles as a young woman and i was told that birth control would just reset my cycles mm -hmm. and uh so it's um, a, a mom came to me asking questions about birth control. Her daughter was without cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, she was super involved in sports, a very smart young lady, a very social young lady, uh, was doing very well, um, but she d stopped having cycles. And so mm -hmm. she went to her physician and they suggested to put her on birth control for that reason to kind of restart things mm -hmm. and get her to have cycles again. And the mom knew to ask questions of, I don't think that this is right. I know you say we shouldn't do this, mm -hmm. but I'm just trying to help my daughter and what else can they do? That's all they offered her. And uh, talking more about it, I really focused on, and because of my understanding that fertility is not just a system in the body that just affects our ability to achieve a pregnancy, but it affects so much of our bodies. It affects our immunity, it affects our bone health, it affects our heart health. And so I just started talking about all of the different areas of her life, her whole being, not just her fertility. Mm. And come to find out this young woman was, um, was dealing with an eating disorder. And so because, and now I know I'm not the doctor and we haven't done f further management of this, but a huge reason you're not going to have cycles is because of under eating, because your cycles are there um, because you are preparing for a pregnancy. So whether you are preparing for a pregnancy or not, your body is always preparing for a pregnancy cyclically like that. So even if you're a teenager and there's pregnancy is so far off the mm -hmm. radar, yeah. your your body is still preparing for that. So when you aren't nourishing your body, there's no way you can nourish another life. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we were, you know, the, the doctors were going to put her on a medication that could have increased her depression, mm -hmm. that could have caused so many other side effects. And we completely missed the root cause of the problem. We were masking that by trying to make her look like she had beautiful cycles every month because of this bleed that she was going to have with birth control. Mm -hmm. But we were com completely missing that. And same with the, um, the heavy bleeding or the painful periods. Mm -hmm. That's the same way as we're missing the root cause. We're trying to put a Band-Aid on something to make it look nice and we're forgetting that we need to find the real reason for those problems. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You, you mentioned um, you have a background in um, was nursing. Did you yes. get a degree mm -hmm. in nursing? Then? Yes, I have my bachelor's okay. in nursing. Mm -hmm. um, so you go into nursing. What really and then sparked the interest in this line of work then? 
Um, cause you said they, if they didn't go over in very much detail about, um, women's like, you know, fertility cycles and stuff like that, um, what really sparked the interest in getting into this line of work then? Oh, that, that has been a journey. And so <laughs> it could be, it could be a whole, a whole show on that. I think of, of trust and of just the amazing, uh, will of God when you allow him to work in your life. Um, but it started kind of, I've always had irregular cycles and was always super frustrated with how my body was working or not working. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I tried to always get down to the bottom of it as I was getting older. Um, I was always given uh, excuses for it of, oh, well, you're super involved in a lot of physical activities in high school. That's probably the reason for it. When I was in college, it's probably because of the stress of college um, and just the change, you know, in your exercise routine mm -hmm. and being away from home. Um, and then when I worked as a nurse, I was, I first started, I worked my first five years of nursing on night shift. And so they always said, oh, it's probably because of your crazy sleeping schedule, which all could have been true. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I do contribute it to some of that. Mm -hmm. um, but then I got to the point where the doctors never wanted to look into the problem until I was ready to have a family. Mm -hmm. So I tried in all of this time as I went through nursing school. Okay. So we learn about um, we learn about the heart health, we learn yeah. about our respiratory health, and we learn about our GI health, and we find that we do test for those things. If we want to diagnose somebody, we do labs, and we do imaging, and we give them a diagnosis, and then we treat them for their problem. But never once did anybody try to treat me for my problem, my reproductive problems. Mm -hmm. They just wanted to wait until I was ready to have children or if I was sexually active and wanting to avoid a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they would take care of that with birth control or they would start me on the medication to try to achieve a pregnancy if I wasn't able to get pregnant on my own. Mm -hmm. And it eventually led to that. My husband and I were married for five years. Mm -hmm. We hadn't achieved a pregnancy. We weren't necessarily actively trying to have a child for several of those years as my husband went through medical school. We were trying to responsibly plan our family through natural family planning, mm -hmm. but I was told the natural family planning methods that I knew about at the time um, said, well, it's going to be very hard as a night shift nurse to do this type of method because it was, um, it was a method that was going to be very hard with my sleep cycle. Mm -hmm. And so I learned to distrust like a method methods like how are they going to help me we kind of flubbed our way through that while also i felt um just i felt really frustrated with my body i felt frustrated that it wasn't working i felt frustrated with the medical community for not helping me with my concerns mm -hmm. and then i started feeling frustrated with my faith my catholic faith because um, I was being told no to a lot of things. You're told no to um, the physical intimacy until marriage. You're told no um, of trying to achieve a pregnancy with artificial means. Mm -hmm. And I always heard those no's, but I was never hearing, this is what we want for you. This is what's better for you. Mm -hmm. This is a yes for you. And so I was hearing a lot of no's. We we got to the point where um, they said uh, IUI or IVF, were, which are artificial means to achieve a pregnancy, were our only ways to achieve a pregnancy. We had gone through um, medications and things like that to try to achieve. Those were all unsuccessful. And so we got to the point where my OBGYN said, well, this is what we have for you. And my husband walked my husband and I walked away and felt like, okay, we'll never have children. I was looking hobbies at what hobbies I could find myself to do. I was trying to learn to play piano and maybe I'd be a photographer and, you know, all the things. Mm -hmm. And I just remember the, um, the, another cycle came, my, my period came again. And so I knew I wasn't pregnant another time. And we knew that we had nothing else to depend on. Mm -hmm. And I just remember falling to the floor, just like with such anger. 
and crying. And I just looked up to God and I just said, okay, God, I can't do this anymore. I give it all to you. I don't know what you want with me. I think I would be an amazing mom. We're trying to do all the things right. I give up. I can't do this. So I'm going to give it to you. We're going to focus on our prayer life as a couple. We're going to, you know, keep going to church. We're going to keep doing all the things. I was a rule follower. I knew I had to do those things, and those things got me through a super hard low point in my life um, and extreme growth. Um, But I gave it to him finally, and he took it and he ran with it. And we finally told our family that we were experiencing trouble. Not that they probably didn't know, Mm -hmm. but we finally said it with our words that we didn't know if we would ever have children. Mm -hmm. And uh, my aunt teach some uh, bioethics courses in college. And so she knows of all the things in the Catholic realm. And... uh, she and my mom had been talking about this and my mom had reached out and said, Hey, why don't you look into NAPRO technology? Remember that she talked about this and there was one doctor that practiced NAPRO technology in Columbus where we were living at the time. And, uh, so I called to make an appointment with him. I was told I needed to schedule with a fertility care practitioner to learn how to chart my cycles. And my husband and I went to that introductory session and we were blown away of what we had no idea about in Mm -hmm. all of our years of dealing with this. No one had ever talked about it this way before. Mm -hmm. And so we jumped on the bandwagon and we're all in. Um, And uh, we... We went to our fertility care practitioner and was learning to chart. It was taking me several months to get into the NAPRO physician, Um, but they needed to see my charting, a few months of charting anyway. So, um, but we conceived identical twin girls within Uh our first month of charting with the Creighton model, naturally, through God's blessing. Mm -hmm. We say, you know, when sometimes when you pray for a miracle, God gives you two. He... (laughs) He blew us away, and I remember, uh, I remember calling my fertility care practitioner, first person I told, even before my <laughs> husband, and I called her, and I said, you will never guess, and she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised, <laughs> and, and I said, how do I become a fertility care practitioner? <laughs> like, this is crazy, because finally, for the first time, mm-hmm. I appreciated the medical stuff, like, I I. I could finally appreciate it and not be frustrated with it because finally somebody was treating fertility Mm -hmm. and treating it as something of beauty and not Mm -hmm. as a disease. And (laughs) I finally got to go and hear my yes and my faith too, because this was something that was allows couples to achieve a pregnancy naturally Mm -hmm. without um, suppressing things, um, and outside sources. And I did have some hormonal instabi- instabilities that made my pregnancies kind of in a place where miscarriage was at a higher risk. And so my, uh, NAPRO physician, uh, supplemented me with, um, bioidentical progesterone, um, which chemically breaks down the same way in our bodies and, uh, sustained my pregnancies when my OBGYN said, oh, we don't have research on that. I'm not even going to check your progesterone level. And he supported me. He supported our pregnancies. Uh, and, so that's how we did a fertility care seminar or a fertility seminar here in Glandorf in 2016. Mm-hmm. It was right when we moved back home. Mm-hmm. Our families live here. So we moved back home with our two girls and we just had another son oh. through Creighton and Napro Congratulations. at the time. Thank you. <laughs> and then we have another son um, <laughs> in that too. So we have four kids. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, And they asked me to speak as a witness at the fertility seminar because no one around here really knew the Creighton model and Mm -hmm. NAPRO technology, but Mm -hmm. they were bringing a physician in to to talk about it. And it was a great crowd. It was 200 people that were here. And I stood up as a witness, bald like a baby. (laughs) And 
I heard so many people come up to me with heartfelt words of just saying, like, how do I find out about this? Tell me more. And I realized with the support of my family, this is what I need to do. This is what God's calling me to do. He would not have put this on my heart if it was not something I was supposed to do Mm -hmm. because I was just amazed at how he worked in our life. So I went back and got trained uh, to be a fertility care practitioner. Oh. That was a super long story. No, that was, that no, was, really was so, such a so nice good. story. I'm so glad I, I feel like you can make a movie about it, actually. Oh, no. No. Genuinely. No, that you know, was that's fantastic. Be a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh my Do you goodness. mind me asking um, how old your old your twins are now? Or like they will be eleven in March. Wow. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so we have our girls are eleven. Um, Audrey and Caroline and Eli is eight. So they are ten. He is eight, and Evan just turned six in November. Oh, so amazing. Mm-hmm. Cute. They're wonderful. They're our Creighton Napro babies. And <laughs> yeah. It's just. Uh, God works in beautiful baby. ways. Yes. So exciting. <laughs> yeah. That's I just, so nice. One thing I, I just love to see. I love to see just a mom proud to be a mom. Mm-hmm. It's just so exciting to see. And it's so easy. Like, I, I hate roaming the internet world because you see so many people, like, talking about how great it is just to, like, you know, be living life and do mm-hmm. whatever the heck you want. No. No, it is not. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just what really is nice to see is just someone who just is a mom and is mm-hmm. happy to be a mom. Mm-hmm. Parents that love yes. to be parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm very fortunate. Um, I have I have six siblings. I come from a nice big family. Um, <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, my mom homeschooled us all. So for this crazy homeschool Catholic family, but <laughs> I love <laughs> so it. Much. Hey, we're discerning homeschooling. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a fantastic thing. Like, I will tell you, I I personally loved it. I, I did it all all twelve years of schooling, and it's my first year in college. Um. It was easy. Um, I, I was kind of, I was really nervous going into college. I was like, mm-hmm. oh man, uh, first day of school. He, yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> no, it was, yeah, actually it was fantastic. I th- my, my parents did a really good job homeschooling. And thanks mom, thanks dad. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very fortunate, but mm-hmm. I just, you just have like this glow of just joy to be a parent mm-hmm. and in your work. And it's just, it's beautiful to see. So thank you very much mm-hmm. for sharing it. Thank you. Of course. Yeah. One thing I have to ask is, um, as a mother, what thing do you want your daughters or even just your children in general to know about their bodies and in general, mm. kind of like that? You sent me that question and I thought, <laughs> wow, <laughs> Becca, <laughs> that is heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I just, uh, I just want them to know that they're loved and that they were made. God doesn't make mistakes that um god created them beautifully in the image and likeness of god and that we are meant to understand so we can appreciate what our bodies do we can't appreciate what we don't understand Mm -hmm. and so it's important to ask why it's important to look for the yeses and and to just trust that god will provide but i think God gives us such a a brain to have that knowledge. And um, I just love like the theology of the body. We were talking. um, (laughs) That's my jam. Um, I I love it so much. And I I'm trying to encompass that in in conversations with our kids Mm -hmm. of just understanding how they were created and why they were created um, that uh, that no's aren't no's, but it's there's a yes for something bigger and better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that God doesn't make mistakes. I guess I could just reiterate, repeat those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's so nice. Love it. So you were talking about theology of the body, and um, like you know, the Catholic Church, like they, we have views on um, birth control and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And some people hear that it's like. Well, why is the Catholic Church against birth control? I mean, that seems kind of weird. Mm-hmm. If they're against abortion, why would they be against birth control? It means less abortions. So if you want to talk on that just a little bit um, about, like, just a little bit on theology of the body and why the Catholic Church really isn't a fan of birth control. Mm. So St. John Paul II was, through his encyclicals, or through his... um his talks, his audiences mm-hmm. put together th- the theology of the body. And it's um, it's just understanding the beauty of how we were created in the image and likeness of God. 
And in regards to birth control, um, it treats fertility as a disease and it doesn't treat people to cooperate with their bodies. And so birth control gets in the way between a husband and wife being able to uh, have the physical intimacy. It's supposed to be both um, life affirming, giving life and unifying. So each of those acts of is your physical intimacy, is it unifying between the husband and the wife, and is it open to life? Um, with, with the birth control pill, we are we are cutting that off. Um, Jason Everett was just here. <laughs> I love how, how he says, you know, um, we would look at a man if he was, if, Um, as crazy if he would put like a pillow over his wife's face and say, I just want the babies. I Mm -hmm. don't want the emotional attachment to you. We would look at him like he was a crazy person. Mm -hmm. But yet we are doing that, the flip side of the coin of that, of we are telling people we want the emotional connection with them, but we don't want the babies with them. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we can't have, that's not how it was intended. That's not the way God intended our bodies to be. And And so it is not cooperative with the body. It is suppressing or destroying that procreative act Mm -hmm. of what God intended for a married couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's just, it's something that's so, it really needs to be hit on because so many people, you know, you can hear it and some people might even follow it, but they they have no idea why. Right. Like, yeah, we are, we're designed this way very intentionally. If that, if the conjugal act wasn't intended to conceive babies, it wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, we were designed that way for a very specific purpose. And I think we'd all appreciate JP too, like mm-hmm. Saint John Paul II. I mean, <laughs> fantastic. I'm actually reading a book by Jason Everett on JP two right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it's awesome. amazing. Um, just like telling about his story and I'm also I'm also Polish. Like my par- um my great grandparents actually um met in a Nazi concentration camp. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Um it's so oh, like that's a s- so his book, this book really hits close to home mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like, it's, it's a crazy story, but I wouldn't be here with, with like, it's right. like my great, great, my great grandparents not met. Um, so, but yeah, he, I just have a great appreciation for JP too. So naturally I just love, um, theology of the body. It's, yes. It's incredible. Yes. And, and once again, once you understand it, you can appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I think people, um, and in our culture, we've kind of separated the two where Mm. you're allowed, you're allowed to have, um, to be together without babies. Mm. And that was never the way it was intended. So, um, certainly, um, also, if a couple is wanting to space their pregnancies, it allows for better communication with the couple, whether they're trying to achieve or avoid a pregnancy. Mm-hmm. But you use non-genital ways to connect, and it builds upon. We have um, in the Creighton world, we call it spice. Mm-hmm. We, um, you focus on a foundation. <laughs> <laughs> we, get, we get spicy in Creighton. That's, that's all I hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's about building a foundation foundation with your spouse of a spiritual connection is the S physical, um, intellectual, creative or communicative and an emotional connection. So it's remembering spice. It's remembering how to have that connection in all of those areas that we are a holistic being. Mm -hmm. We are not just our fertility. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can build the foundation on whether you are achieving a pregnancy or avoiding a pregnancy just by understanding how our bodies work. Mm -hmm. It gives a woman the understanding and the language of her body, but it helps the men appreciate the beauty of what the womanly body does. Mm -hmm. And it gives, it helps to open their eyes to how we were created just as much as the woman. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Yeah. Um, I have a question kind of about IVF, another kind of (laughs) <laughs> you got it i i'm kind here, of about it in general yeah. kind of about it in general just ivf like maybe catholic church's thoughts on ivf and um maybe just like the dangers of it or just like ivf kind of in general a little bit yeah they just touch base on it um well i guess it all goes back to that theology of the body mm-hmm. of w- what is intended 
in the conjugal act of you have unification and you have openness to life. And when IVF or um, in vitro fertilization, um, conception happens outside of the woman's body. Mm -hmm. And so um, the sperm and the egg are uh, put together and unified um, in scientific tools and devices. Um, And so the woman's body um, is put through a lot of stress by maybe shots that she has to take, hormones that she has to take. Um, that can also be very dangerous if they overstimulate her ovaries and things like that. Um, for the man, um, it requires masturbation in order to achieve his cell. Mm-hmm. So it's also it's um, undignified for both the woman and the woman's health and the man and, and what he has to do to provide um, the cell for conception. And then it's outside of the woman's body. So they do not come together as husband and wife in order to achieve a pregnancy. Then we are allowing human hands to decide if life continues or if it is ended or if it is frozen. And so um, it is taken, uh, even though you can do it, so it's uh, it's able to be done, right? They have scientifically done it, but it doesn't mean that we should do it. Mm-hmm. And I always go back to... Um, the parents have a strong desire to be parents, and that is a beautiful desire Mm -hmm. um, that they are open to having children. So it is good for the couple to be parents, but is it good for everyone in this situation, which includes the children that are created through this process? Will they have the chance to to live a life? Will they be frozen? Will they um, stop dividing? Um, and growing, and so they are just thrown out. Um, so I think the question needs to be asked is, is this good for all? It, it can be good for the husband and wife to be parents, but it's not good for everyone in this situation. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's allowing human hands to dictate that versus God working in that. Mm-hmm. So in a lot of different aspects. The Catholic Church is against it because it goes against the foundation, foundational belief of how life should be achieved mm-hmm. and conceived. We're co-creators. Mm-hmm. That's interesting because I've seen so many people, you know, online uh, who struggle with fertility and then they go and they do IVF because they really want to be parents, but they know no other way because it's just in their minds, not achievable naturally Mm -hmm. to them. And I just find that so sad to see that they don't know about nap pro or anything. (laughs) That's you hit the nail on the head. (laughs) Exactly. Because they've went through so many years of, Mm -hmm no answers and sometimes when you're able to get answers about the fertility problems that you have you can find some kind of closure in that Mm -hmm. that we have done what we could and we are still remaining open to life but now it's in God's hands I mean it's always in God's hands (laughs) but you know um they often have a lot of unanswered questions and then they also have the problems of maybe they were able to achieve a pregnancy through IVF, but no one addressed their health problem, Mm -hmm. addressed the woman's health problem of why they weren't able to conceive naturally in the first place. And so like I mentioned earlier, our heart health can be affected, our immunity, our bone health, so many things can be affected. Um, by our hormones being imbalanced and having endometriosis or polycystic ovarian syndrome or something. And if those things aren't fixed, those women might get to be mamas, but are they going to be healthy mamas as they get to be 40, 50, 60 years old? Or are they going to end up with cancer and high blood pressure and lots of calcium buildup in the arteries and osteoporosis and all the things that can happen with years of hormone imbalances Mm -hmm. being unaddressed and Mm -hmm. oftentimes even worse and hysterectomies being done at a way too early age Mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, And we can act like we can just remove these things and do these things without any kind of sadness in that woman's body because Mm -hmm. that's not that her body was never healed. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's yeah. really sad. Well, thank you again for being here, mm-hmm. uh, Wendy. I do really appreciate, appreciate it. it. <laughs> um, remember when Becca messaged me about it, I was like, oh, I'm like, that sounds so cool. I'm like, I know almost nothing about, <laughs> about that. <it. laughs> I was like, so at least I know my questions will be genuine. <laughs> yes. uh, so yeah, um, I can't thank you enough for coming. Mm-hmm. I am really happy just with the conversation we've had. Mm-hmm. Um, um, did you learn a lot from it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that was awesome. No, I really do. Like, it was nice just to hear, especially your story and mm-hmm. your testament to it. Um, just, and it's also, it's like, you're like a beacon of hope for people out there who do struggle with fertility. Because, mm-hmm. like, it, it's a very, it's a very real problem in the world. And I'm a dude, so I can't, like, I can't say the same, but in the sense, I can only imagine how just disheartening it would feel. Like, mm-hmm. well, just what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I figure this out Mm -hmm. and especially if doctors out out there don't understand how really to fix certain issues and they they immediately go to the synthetic things or Mm -hmm. um ivf and stuff like that and they don't take a minute to like you said address the issue of but why is there infertility Mm -hmm. um it's just something for anyone who's listening to this thing who might be struggling with this to think about and maybe seek alternative options before they go down an artificial path right Um, Mm -hmm. so Thank you very much for being Thank here. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, as we begin to wrap up, uh, special thanks to um, Deacon Jeff Compton once mm-hmm. again for getting this all set up <laughs> and Holy Family Radio for having us mm-hmm. um, and our tech guy for doing entity editing. I don't know if that'll be – I edited our last one uh, to save <laughs> our guy our, our guy some time. Mm-hmm. Um, might do this one. We'll find out. Uh, also, remember, <laughs> like and subscribe. We do appreciate that. Comments are always appreciated mm-hmm. if you have – if you know anyone in the future you want to see on here, uh, say an idea for a future episode. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't, like, cause there, there's almost an unlimited number of things to talk about. We there could, is. So if you have an idea, please let us know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. As we wrap up, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> thank you. Bye. God bless.